Hey everyone, this is Pete. Sometimes I sit down of an evening and just fancy playing something a bit different. And so it was that I came to trawling through my GOG.com library and discovered that at some point I'd purchased the Trilogy of Alien Breed reboots that Team 17 began releasing in 2009. So I thought I'd give the first entry, Alien Breed Impact, a go. I'll preface the following by saying that this video isn't intended to be a full review because I haven't played the game all the way through yet. But I did want to share some first impressions, because Alien Breed Impact is the sort of game where you'll probably figure out whether or not it's for you before the surprisingly substantial first level is over and done with. A bit of context first though, for the benefit of those who might not be familiar with the source material. Alien Breed was first released in 1991 for Amiga, with an MS-DOS port coming two years later in 1993. It's a top-down action-adventure game that draws inspiration from a variety of sources, most notably the movie Aliens and the 8-bit home computer games Laser Squad by Julian Gollop and Paradroid by Andrew Braybrook. It also draws frequent comparisons to other classic top-down shooters, including Atari Games' Gauntlet, Sega's Alien Syndrome and Pandora's Into the Eagle's Nest. The original Amiga version of Alien Breed was very well received, with its expanded budget re-release Alien Breed Special Edition 92 being one of the most popular titles on the platform, staying in the British software charts for over a year. It ultimately spawned two well-regarded sequels and a pair of first-person shooter spin-offs, the latter of which curiously remained Amiga exclusive, despite the popularity of the genre having exploded on MS-DOS PC in the few years since their launch, and the second of them being far too ambitious for the platform to handle effectively. The reboot of Alien Breed that we're looking at today was initially released as an Xbox Live Arcade downloadable title for Xbox 360 in 2009, where it was known as Alien Breed Evolution. Alien Breed Impact is an expanded and updated version of Alien Breed Evolution and was released for Windows PC and PlayStation 3 in 2010. It was subsequently followed up by two sequels, much like the original Alien Breed trilogy, though it's worth noting that these newer games have relatively little to do with the original Amiga games aside from overall vibe. That vibe should be underestimated though, as it means that Alien Breed impacts will feel pleasingly familiar and authentic to veterans of the original Amiga games, despite being an all original game and considerably superior from a technical perspective. Although still unfolding as a top-down action game, Alien Breed Impact now uses Unreal Engine 3 for atmospheric 3D visuals, a dual-stick control scheme, or a mouse and keyboard setup on PC for those without the controller, and a much stronger emphasis on an ongoing story. But the fundamentals are still very much there. The sense of atmosphere, the survival horror-esque mechanics of having to manage limited resources such as ammunition and health, the fact that levels have plenty to explore rather than simply providing a linear critical path to the finish line, and of course a variety of slimy monsters to splat across the nearest wall thanks to a variety of heavy weaponry. In Alien Breed Impact you take on the role of Conrad, an engineer on the spaceship Leopold. According to the game's backstory comic, which you can review from the main menu, Conrad harbours something of a grudge towards synthetic humanoids, thanks mostly to an incident that ended up taking the life of his wife and obliterating a moon base he was supposed to be protecting. Naturally, this means that the game forces him straight into cooperating with a synthetic humanoid, in this case an android named Mia, who rescues him from certain death when the Leopold crashes into a mysterious space hulk. Recognising admirably quickly that under such circumstances it's probably a good idea to set his prejudices aside, Conrad decides to cooperate with Mia to stop his ship from blowing up, see if anyone actually survived the impact, yeah, see what they did there, and get to the bottom of where these horrible bug-like things are coming from. What then unfolds feels authentically alien breed, in that you have distinct missions to complete as you progress, rather than simply fighting your way to the exit of a level. Where things differ a little from the original game is in the fact that each level of Alien Breed Impact tends to include a string of objectives rather than one single thing for you to accomplish. Or perhaps it's more accurate to say that Alien Breed Impact takes you step by step through the process of completing a level, whereas the original Alien Breed would have just given you an objective and told you to get on with it. The basic flow of Alien Breed Impact becomes quite predictable after a while. 
you'll be told to go and do something, but inevitably when you get to the thing in question there's something blocking your path, be it a locked door, a malfunctioning piece of equipment, or an inconvenient raging inferno preventing you from progressing. Subsequently, you'll be sent to go and do something else that will deal with the problem, and allow you to proceed. More often than not, this is a case of either finding a keycard or operating a computer terminal. Partway through the first level, this structure becomes so predictable as to be almost comical, but it does at least ensure you have plenty of things to do and plenty of reason to explore the level thoroughly. Speaking of exploring, don't count on the in-game map being particularly useful however, since for some inexplicable reason it doesn't actually show where any doors are, which makes it quite difficult to distinguish between connected rooms and those that simply share a wall with one another. Alien Breed Impact clearly took a few cues from other action games from the period, such as Valve's 2008 co-op hit Left 4 Dead. There are sequences throughout where instead of pushing forwards, you're expected to survive an incoming swarm of enemies while some sort of process completes. Although unoriginal, these sections do break up the momentum of the level somewhat and provide some dramatic set pieces to enjoy, rather than simply continually creeping through darkened corridors in search of the next objective marker. Similar to the original Amiga games, Alien Breed Impact allows you to collect credits as you explore the levels, and these can then be spent at computer terminals to replenish your ammunition, stock up on useful items, or upgrade your character and weapons in various ways. Because the credits available to you are quite limited in the early stages of the game, you'll need to make some tough decisions as to whether you purchase things that benefit you right now, or if you save up for the more expensive upgrades which tend to be more useful in the long run. There's a definite survival horror style sense of scarcity, particularly in the early game. Ways to replenish your health in particular are very hard to come by, and thus it's best to try and avoid taking damage as much as possible lest you find yourself in a frustrating situation where you have a difficult section to complete and no health buffer to protect you from unexpected hazards. And this is one area where Alien Breed Impact differs from its predecessors. There are no lives here, so when you're dead, you're dead, and it's back to the last time you saved, either manually at one of the terminals or at one of the relatively infrequent autosave points. Modern players will likely be in two minds about this approach to saving. While it prevents the sort of tedious quicksave scumming that blighted late 90s and early 2000s first person shooters, it's inordinately frustrating to keep getting sent back to the same checkpoint or manual save, perhaps hearing the same piece of dialogue over and over again until you successfully overcome the challenge ahead of you. On the other hand, it does provide a genuine sense of satisfaction when you do make it through a difficult section by the skin of your teeth, and you know that you haven't just brute forced your way through or done the home video game equivalent of credit feeding. Thankfully, while there is a short load time between dying and picking up where you left off, on most modern PCs it should be a couple of seconds at most, so death is, for the most part, a relatively minor inconvenience. I can't speak for the PlayStation 3 version, however. While it was released for consoles, the hefty length of each level gives Alien Breed Impact a distinct PC game feeling to it. While it lacks the in-depth interaction of classic sci-fi games for the platform such as System Shock and its ilk, it feels very much like a game where you're supposed to sit down and engage with it for a significant period of time, rather than simply boot it up if you're in the mood for a quick blast. Whether or not this is a good or a bad thing depends entirely on what you're looking for. For my money, I rather like having an action game that feels like it has some depth and substance to it. It's not as if we're short of quick-hit arcade-style twin-stick shooters after all, so to have something like Alien Breed Impact, where the satisfying mechanics of the genre are combined with substantial levels and long-term objectives, is rather enjoyable for me. The most common criticism of Alien Breed Impact is that it becomes repetitive after a while, particularly if you immediately follow it up with its two rather similar sequels. And I can certainly see how that would be the case. The first level repeats itself in terms of each objective's overall structure a few times, for example. But this also makes Alien Breed Impact an ideal sort of secondary game to have in the back burner while you concentrate on a more major project. What I mean by that is that if you're the sort of person who likes to have one main game on the go at a time, something big and time consuming like an RPG or open world game for example, then Alien Breed Impact is a good title to have on hand for when you want to play something else for a bit, but you don't want to go for something as simple and straightforward as an arcade style game. Its mechanics are straightforward enough that it's pick up and play, meaning you can set it aside for a while and not forget everything you know about it by the time you next decide to give it a shot, 
but it has enough substance to provide a satisfying sense of progression as you work your way through it. In other words, while you may find yourself quickly tiring of Alien Breed Impact if you make it the only game you play for a particular period of time, you'll probably have a fairly rewarding experience if you chip away at it a level at a time, when you're just in the mood for something other than your main gaming project at that time. That's certainly how I intend to continue playing it. I like what I've seen so far, and there are definitely times when I'm in the mood for what it offers in favour of the other kinds of game that I spend my time with. So I'll most likely be keeping it installed for those evenings when I feel like playing a video game, but I don't feel like playing whatever sprawling RPG I've got stuck into this time. And I think that'll work out pretty well in the long run. Your mileage may of course vary, depending on what type of gamer you are. But those are my first impressions from spending a couple of hours with Alien Breed Impact this week. So for now, it just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.